So, you want to be a Twitch streamer. You play video games, and now you want to play them for an audience. The question is, where do you even start? Today's video is something that I see as sort of a rite of passage for anybody that wants to make content to help other streamers. If you're gonna teach people how to be successful on Twitch, you gotta teach them how to stream in the first place. Which, technically, I already did. But it's been four years, and uh, I think I can do better. And speaking of streaming on Twitch, I do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday over on my Twitch channel. Link is always in the description. And uh, let's get to it. First things first, this video is for OBS Studio and not Streamlabs OBS. While setting up Streamlabs OBS is very similar to setting up OBS Studio, there are a few personal reasons why I don't use Streamlabs OBS, nor do I recommend it, that I will get into towards the end of the video. So, before we do anything, you need to download and install OBS, so go ahead and go to obsproject.com, click on the Windows icon, and... Do, do I really need to go over this part? Can, can I trust you to download and install a program? Okay, good. So you've downloaded it, you've installed it, you open it up, and this is what you get. You got this big blank black box right here. You've got this scenes box, you got this sources box, you've got the audio mixer, you've got your scene transitions, and you have your controls. And look, I know you want to jump right in and make your stream look all pretty, but we've got to go over a few settings first, because there's really no point to your stream looking all pretty if it's not gonna go anywhere. So click on settings and you will be greeted with the general tab, and you don't have to change anything in the general tab if you don't want to. They're just personal preference, quality of life options that you can toggle on or off, so we're just gonna skip that one and go directly to the stream tab. And here we're gonna leave our service at Twitch because we are streaming to Twitch. And then we're going to connect our account in one of two ways. The first way is to just click on this connect account button right here and sign in and boom, you're connected. The second way is the old way and is a little bit more in depth. You're gonna click on this use stream key button here and then you are going to go to your Twitch dashboard, go to stream manager, preferences channel and then right here is your primary stream key so go ahead and copy that go over to OBS again and paste that in the dialog box and once again boom you're connected also if you use that method you shouldn't show your stream key to anybody else because that also gives them the access to stream on your channel but if you do it's not that big of a deal you'll just go back to where your primary stream key is and hit this reset button right here Moving on to the output tab, you're going to want to change the output mode from simple to advanced because that is going to allow you to stream and record with different settings at the same time. For your encoder, provided you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you've got two options. You've got X264, which uses your CPU to encode the stream, or you've got the NVIDIA NVENC encoder, which uses a special processor on your graphics card to encode the stream. I would highly recommend using the NVIDIA NVENC if you have the option, that way it frees up your processor to do everything else that you're throwing at it while you're streaming. For rescale output, you're going to want to check that and then move this all the way down to 852 by 480. And I know I'm going to get some flack for telling you to stream in 480p, but there is a very, very good reason for it. As a brand new streamer, you don't get Twitch's quality options, and as such, you don't want to alienate potential viewers with subpar internet by streaming at a resolution and bitrate that's way too high for their internet to handle. The resolution and bitrate that you set in OBS is going to be the resolution and bitrate that Twitch displays your stream at, and is going to be the only option that your viewers have. And trust me, you will get many more people leaving your stream if they can't watch it than you will get people complaining that you're streaming at 480p. I'll go over this in much, much, much greater detail in next Friday's video that goes over Twitch's quality options and their transcoding service and how all of that works. So, your resolution is set to 480p. 
You're going to make sure your rate control is at CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, and you're going to want to set your bitrate down to 1500 kilobits per second. That is a very easy bitrate for most internet speeds to handle while still saving bandwidth for anything else that they may be doing. We're going to keep all of the rest of these settings the same, so go ahead and hit apply and move on to your audio tab. Here we're only going to be changing two things. The first thing is the desktop audio, which is the audio device that your stream will hear to hear your gameplay, alerts, all of that stuff. So go ahead and set that to whatever you want it to be. For me, that would be speakers high definition audio device. And then for your microphone, you're going to want to set that to, uh, to your microphone. So for me, that would be USB audio codec right here. And that's it! Go ahead and hit apply again, and then go to your video settings. And the only thing that you want to change here is go to the output or scaled resolution and bump that back up to 1080p. And the reason that we're scaling in the output tab rather than in the video tab is because if you want to stream at 480p so that viewers can actually watch your stream, but you want to have a high quality recording of that stream, OBS allows you to record and stream at separate resolutions and bit rates. So your stream will be at 480p, but your recording of that stream that you can upload to YouTube or re-upload to Twitch or do whatever you want to do with it will be at 1080p. And if you want to do that, just go back to the output tab, go to the recording tab within the output tab, and then mess with all of your settings in here. I'm not going to go over that because they're the same settings as in the streaming tab, but they're separate. They're going to be what you're recording at and not what you're streaming at. So once you're all done, hit apply one more time and then hit OK. And now we move on to the good stuff, actually setting up what your stream is going to look like for your viewers. I'm going to be showing you how to make two of the three main scenes that I use when I stream, the intermission screen and the gameplay screen. When you first open up OBS, you're going to have one scene called scene and no sources. Scenes are the different screens that your viewers see and sources are the elements that make up those scenes. So go ahead and right click on this scene hit rename and we're going to call this intermission. And now we get to add our sources. We're going to start with our webcam because that's the most important part of your stream that your viewers can see you. Click on this plus icon down here and then go to video capture device. Name it what you want. I'm going to call it camera. And then from this drop down, select your webcam. Mine is the Logitech C920, which is already selected for me. Then under resolution or FPS type, change this from device default to custom because I don't know if you noticed, but when the webcam showed up there, it wasn't in 1080p. So change this right here to 1080p and then keep this at match output FPS because that is going to keep it at the FPS that your camera is running at. And then a couple of other quick changes. You're going to want to change the color space to 709 and the color range to full. And that's just going to make your colors stand out a bit more. Hit OK, and there you go. You've got your webcam in your scene. Also, I know that I literally just said that changing those two settings are going to give you more color, but then my color looks pretty flat on my webcam. That's just because I do my color grading separately, so I like to keep the colors on my webcam by default as flat as possible. The other main part of any good intermission screen is the alerts, which are pretty straightforward to add. Click on this plus icon right here once again and go up to browser. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it alerts. And you will be greeted with this little dialogue window that says you've just added a browser source and then tells you what to do with a browser source. But you don't need that because I'm here. For the URL, you're going to want to go to your alerts platform. Mine would be Streamlabs. Go to the alert box section and then copy your widget URL right here. Paste it in. Change the width and the height to whatever you have the width and height set in your alert system. Mine would be 1920 by 1080. And hit OK. So now, if I test an alert, they show up right there. And that is the intermission screen. Super simple. There's obviously a lot more you can do with it, but that is the basics of any intermission screen. Next up is the gameplay scene, so go ahead and click on this plus icon under the scenes area, add a scene, and we're going to call it gameplay. And right off the bat, you'll see that all of the sources that you added in your previous scene are no longer there because obviously this is a separate scene. 
To add in sources in other scenes that you've already made in previous scenes, go ahead and click the plus icon once again, choose the category of whatever it was, in this case we're choosing video capture device because it was our webcam, and then right here under add existing, you will see all of these sources that you have already made. So we can add camera, click OK, and there it is, the camera is back in this scene. But this is your gameplay screen and not your intermission screen, so the camera probably shouldn't take up the whole thing. To scale it down, simply click on any one of these grabby dongles and drag it down to whatever size you want it to be, and then move it to wherever you want it to be, and there you go. Your webcam is now in the location that you want it to be in your gameplay screen. To add the alerts back in, just do the same exact thing. Click on the plus, go to browser, click add existing, and then add your alerts. And once again, if we test an alert, it shows up in this scene as well. And the final part of your gameplay screen is your actual gameplay. Go ahead and click on the plus icon and choose display capture. Name it whatever you want. We're going to call it game. And then in this drop down, choose the monitor that your games are going to be on. For me, I'm going to choose display three. Right now, that's just showing Adobe Audition, which is recording my voice. But that's just because that's what's on this monitor right now. Very important, uncheck capture cursor here and then hit OK because if you leave capture cursor checked, if you accidentally leave your cursor on your game while you're playing, the stream is going to see that and you're going to get a thousand comments in your chat going, move your cursor, cursor's on the screen, and you don't want that. But now you'll see that since we added our game, the alerts and the camera are no longer showing up. And that is because the game is on top of the camera here in the same way that the game is on top of the camera in your sources list. Think of your sources as a stack. Whatever's on top of the stack is what you're going to see first. So since you want the webcam and the alerts on top of the gameplay, you're going to put the webcam and the alerts on top of the gameplay. So there you go. You've got your gameplay scene and you've got your intermission screen. And when you switch between the two, you've got this nice crossfade effect between them. And if you don't like that, feel free to change them in the scene transition options over here. One last thing to go over, and that is the audio mixer over here. In it, you'll notice that we have three different audio devices. We have our microphone, and our desktop audio, which we set up in the settings earlier, and then we also have the audio from our camera. If you add a source that also has audio associated with it, that source will not only appear in your sources box, but also in the audio mixer. But because we already have our microphone picking up our voice, we don't want the webcam audio in here. To get rid of it, all you have to do is click on this, which mutes it, and then click on the gear, and hit hide, and that'll take it out of your audio mixer. So now we're left with just the desktop or game audio and the microphone. And typically, you want your microphone to be louder than your desktop audio. So just grab the slider underneath desktop audio and drag it down to where you feel it's a good balance with your microphone. And this will take some adjusting and fine tuning to figure out what a good balance is. So I would recommend either doing some test recordings or doing a test stream on an alternate account before you go live on your main account for the first time. And that is all you need to start your first stream. You've got your settings configured, you've got your gameplay scene, you've got your intermission screen, you've got your audio balanced, you're ready to go! It's worth noting though that what I just taught you is just the tip of the iceberg for what you can do with OBS. If we go to the scenes that I actually use for my stream, you'll see that you can do a lot more with this. We've got the three main scenes that I use, we've got reward scenes, we've got scenes within scenes, we've got fluid transitions between scenes. You can get a lot more advanced and a lot more creative. And don't worry. I'll have tutorials out in the future teaching you how to do every single thing that I just showed you. If you'd like to see all of my advanced OBS sorcery in action, like I said, I do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday over on my Twitch channel. Link is always in the description. And thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Hope you learned something. I know you have a choice in who you choose for your gaming tech and entertainment content. So once again, thanks for choosing me, and I'll see you in the next one.
That was amazing. No.